Hey everybody, welcome to PC Perspective. I'm Ryan Shrout. Today's a big day in the world of PC hardware. It is Skylake launch day. And we've already posted our review and our video review of the new Core i7-6700K. But I also wanted to talk about another series of tests that I ran with this new processor that I'm hoping will kind of uh, at least illustrate some of the differences between an architecture like Sandy Bridge, which is now five generations back, and something newer like Skylake, and how it actually affects kind of actual real-world discrete gaming. What you see here is I have this Asus Z170 Deluxe motherboard. I've got our Skylake processor installed on it. And then in front of that, I have two GeForce GTX 980 graphics cards. Uh, I basically just wanted to pick a high-end video card that wasn't the ultra enthusiast version, but it also wasn't a mainstream card, something that somebody that might be looking to upgrade their entire platform might consider uh, for this purpose. So what I did was we ran tests on four different games, Bioshock Infinite, Metro Last Light, uh, Grid 2, and Grand Theft Auto 5 in several different configurations, trying to, uh, trying to see what changed with our average performance, what changed with our frame times consistency, and how all that kind of related to each other in terms of these two, uh, at least these two specific architectures. The two architectures we looked at were Skylake and Sandy Bridge. The Core i7-2600K is the processor we used for that. That's a CPU that was massively popular. I'm sure there are tons of people that are still working on that, uh, that system, uh, or maybe even stuff older than that. And so what we did was, with a single GPU, with just one GTX 980, we ran those four games at both 1080p and 2560 by 1440. The results showed that at 1080p, where the GPU is slightly less of a bottleneck on performance, the average frame rate and frame times were better and more consistent with the higher end, or not the higher end, but the newer Skylake platform. For example, in Bioshock Infinite, we saw an 8% better average frame rate. In Grand, uh, in Grand Theft Auto 5, that was actually 25%. In Grid 2, it was 7%, and in Metro Last Light, it was pretty much even. Now, what you'll see there is not only average frame rate improvements, but much more consistent frame times, which means you're going to have a much smoother gaming experience in addition to a higher frame rate. Now with the single GPU, when we increased that to 2560 by 1440, a lot of those differences went away, both average frame rate and average frame time. Bioshock Infinite was now even, Grid 2 was even, and Metro Last Light was maybe 2 or 3% difference uh, between Skylake and Sandy Bridge. Grand Theft Auto is still a little bit uh, more dramatic, about 5% and a slight gap there in your uh, frame time with the edge going to uh, the new Skylake platform. So as you increase the resolution, the impact that your CPU has tends to be less. This, this makes sense. But we also wanted to try SLI. We know from both NVIDIA and AMD stance, the driver workload for multi-GPU configurations is much more strenuous. It's more than two times the workload you would normally do in order to balance everything uh, in terms of what the game is trying to do and what the driver is trying to do. Now with two 980s, we only did our testing at 2560 by 1440 because hopefully nobody's running two of these cards on a 1080p screen. And the differences were actually pretty compelling as well. If you look at just average frame rates, Bioshock was 10% faster on Skylake. Uh, Grid 2 was 18% faster on Skylake. Metro Last Light was 12% faster. And GTA 5 was 42% faster on average frame rate, going from Sandy Bridge to a Skylake platform. And if you look at those numbers again, in terms of frame times, if you look at our graphs of frame, uh, frame time consistency, the uh, Skylake platform was definitely ahead of the game there here, right? They, it was much smoother. You got much more consistent animation capabilities. Uh, and just overall, the gaming experience on Skylake was better, noticeably, than the gaming experience on Sandy Bridge. Now, I don't want to sit here and tell everybody that has a Sandy Bridge platform that you have to upgrade, but what we are seeing is really the accumulation of five generations of Intel processor improvements that are slowly have slowly kind of made the Sandy Bridge designs less efficient and less able to kind of handle the modern workloads of PC gaming. So if you are a user that's on a Nehalem or Sandy Bridge, or maybe even an Ivy Bridge processor, and you're thinking, well, I've always been told that changing your processor and platform makes no impact on actual real-world gaming. 
we have a couple examples here where that clearly is the case. If you do 1080p gaming, you're going to see some improvement with a single GPU. And if you have any idea or any inkling rather to do multi GPU gaming, whether it be with Nvidia or AMD, I would guess, uh, you're going to see better scaling, better improvement, and a better overall gaming experience uh, with Skylake than you would with those with those older systems. Guys, I want to hear what you what your thoughts on it. Do you think this is true? Do you do you think it's time to finally upgrade your Nehalem or Sandy Bridge platform? And also make sure you go to PCPer.com. Uh, we have all the benchmarks laid out there, details on how we ran the tests, uh, so you can see how uh, the consistency changes there amongst these. But but I think we are making the case here, guys that it's time to move past Sandy Bridge. See you next time.